Hi guys, today I'm going to be making these Midori size traveler's notebook inserts. I have a plain paged one with sort of thick paper and then a calendar that I designed. I have recently been really into Midori notebooks, but I didn't want to spend a whole lot of money buying the inserts, so I decided I would make them. And these will fit inside a normal Midori um, sized traveler's notebook. So yeah, if you guys want to learn how to make these, then just keep watching. make the first one which is the plain paged one I'm using drawing paper from Master Touch this is 9 by 12 and this is sort of like a sketchbook but thicker paper than normal sketching paper and I really really like it you're going to need some thicker paper or like patterned paper for your cover and I have some uh, very thick like cardstock I got from Hobby Lobby and then um, just some like cardboardish brown paper. <laughs> You're also going to need an awl. Um, that one on the left I just got at Walmart and it was like four dollars and I've been wanting one of these for a very long time. I was really excited when I found this. Um, I didn't know that they sold these but yeah I really like it. You're also going to, well you don't really need this but I just bought a bone folder also from Walmart for like two bucks. So I was really excited about that too. You're gonna need string, scissors, and an exacto knife or utility blade. My utility blade is actually pretty dull right now though. <laughs> so starting off, I am taking out 12 pieces of this paper. I actually wish I had um, uh, used more pieces of paper. My notebook could have been a little bigger, but I was worried that since the paper was thick, um, the book would have just been a little bit too bulky, but I actually could have had more paper. So now I am cutting them 21 centimeters vertically. Yeah, 21 centimeters. That is the height of a Midori's Traveler's Notebook insert. So, yeah, that's what I'm doing. And you could use scissors, but I'm really bad with like measuring and cutting straight <laughs> so mm -hmm. I'm using my paper cutter thing that my sister got me that I love so yeah I'm just cutting them so now I'm just folding the pieces of paper in half and I am using my bone folder which I actually really like and I'm putting the pieces of paper into one signature. You're only going to have one. You're not going to have multiple like for other journals because that's how the inserts are for Midori. And don't worry, we are going to cut the width of this book because the width of the book is not correct right now. The height is, but not the width. Because if you've ever made a signature before and used like a lot of paper or thick paper, you know that the, the, the pieces of paper <laughs> towards the middle like bulge out. They stick out, which I personally really don't like and that's just not how these books look they need to be like clean cut so yeah you're going to create the book first and then cut it to the right size and then I'm just going to cut the piece of I don't it's not cardstock I, I don't know it's just very thick paper in like the scrapbook section at Hobby Lobby and I'm cutting that also 21 centimeters but leaving the width because I'm also going to cut that along with the paper. So now I'm going to bind the book before I cut it so that cutting it would be, it'll be easier with all the pages already together. I am uh, marking three holes half an inch apart towards both ends of the book half an inch from each end and then in the middle of the book. I just liked how this looked. You could bind this little book however you want. This is uh, sort of a harder way to do it. It's a little bit more tedious but I liked how it looked. You could also use staples but I tried to make a book with staples and I didn't really like how the staples uh, felt in the middle of the notebook. You know what I'm saying? They were like sharp. I don't know. I personally just like stitching better. So now I'm going to poke the holes using my awl. This isn't the one I got at Walmart because I needed it to be slim. And I'm, I'm poking the holes with the book almost closed because that will create a better hole. And I put all those clips on the book, but it didn't really help. 
So now we are going to stitch it. I already did two to practice before I filmed. <laughs> you're going to need a needle. Oh, I didn't mention that you need a needle. And you're going to go through the center hole, and I'm I am using that all to make the hole a little bit bigger. Going through the center hole, hole going through the top, then you're going to go through the middle again. And then through the bottom. It's very simple. Very simple binding. If you can get through your hole. <laughs> and then you're just going to tie it off. And I just tied, you know, a bunch of knots. Now you could do this. You could, like, have one of these if you just made your, your holes further apart. Do you, you guys understand? Like, if you could make one just bigger, or you could have just two, but I liked how three looked, even though it was a little tedious. I just, I liked how the binding looked. Yeah, very simple and sturdy. I, I really like it. I liked having three just so that it held together better, but you could just bind this however you want. And now we are going to cut it. Now I put some of those clips to help the book stay together and you are going to mark 11 inches. That's going to be the width of your book. That's how big the inserts are from Midori. And I'm using my metal ruler and my exacto, not my exacto knife, my utility blade and cutting the pieces of paper. Now unfortunately my cut was not completely straight. The blade just bent at the top so I had to kind of adjust or I had to cut a little bit off the top as you can kind of see there, a little mistake, but if my utility blade had been sharper, it would have worked better. <laughs> Here's the little book. I really like it. I wish I had to put more pages in it, and I really like the paper. It's off-white and really smooth, and I love that it's the size of a normal insert. I, I really like it. Now, the second one that I'm going to make is a calendar. I really wanted a calendar, but I didn't want to buy one, and then I just figured out how to make one on my own. Now I'm showing you that you need staples and a pin, uh, but ignore that. You don't need that. <laughs> you will need adhesive. Now I have double-sided tape and some acid-free stick glue. And you'll need a pencil, scissors. You will need a ruler. And this ruler is from Hobby Lobby, by the way. <laughs> You will need some kind of pretty paper. And because that paper was super thin, I used a hard uh, cardstock piece of paper as well. But if you have really thick paper, you don't need to do that. And then you will need these calendar templates that I actually made myself. And yeah, I know they look a little bit weird right now, but I'll show you how to use them. <laughs> And I only have four because I just want to finish off the year. I don't want to have too many because at the beginning of the year I want to make a new one. But I really wanted a calendar for the rest of the year because I don't have one. Okay, so you are going to fold this piece of paper but not in half. You're going to fold three from the first three squares in between Tuesday and Wednesday. That's where you're going to fold. You're going to have three squares on one side and four on the other. And then you're going to mark 11 centimeters from where you folded it. Now, I'm, I made these templates myself. It took me hours to make them <laughs> because you have to think of size and where the paper is going to fold and all that stuff. And I will have, in the description box, I will have a link so that you guys can just print these out for yourself. They're all finished. You don't have to touch them, you just need to print them out and then just do what I'm doing to them right now. You're going to cut, you're going to mark, sorry, 21 centimeters down. And it's free. You just have to print it. <laughs> And then you're also going to mark 11 centimeters from the other side. So from the middle on the other side. <laughs> and 
So as you can see, there are four squares on one side, well they're not really squares, rectangles, three on the other, and you're gonna have you're gonna have more space on the left side. Now you're just going to cut your paper. Unfortunately my cut was not very straight, so I had to fix that. You need to make sure that your measurements are exactly what I'm telling you or the book won't work. I went through many rough drafts of this little calendar. <laughs> to get to this. Now when you fold it in half it is perfect and I'm just checking to make sure that I cut correctly. So your piece of paper should be 21 by 22 centimeters. Okay so this book's pretty different because you are not going to create a signature. If you did, as you can see, that wouldn't work because then you have to worry about printing on the back of the paper as well. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be gluing these pieces of paper together, adhering them. See, you're going to glue the right side of the first page to the left side of the second. And I'm going to be using double-sided tape for this, and you're just going to do that for all the pieces of paper, <laughs> for every piece. And I'm just using this double-sided tape. Um, I'm not really sure where I got this one, but I know you can get it at Hobby Lobby acid-free for very inexpensive. So I'm just doing that, and then I'm also going to use some stick glue. Oh, and just a side note, I did not use regular copy paper for this calendar, I did use the same paper I used for the other journal, but I just cut it down to printing paper size first before I printed on it, just so you guys know. And yeah, I'm just doing that to every piece of paper. You just want to uh, be sure that when you put the two pieces of paper together, uh, that you're careful that you're putting them together well, because I had trouble, I believe, with this piece. Yep. <laughs> I had to peel it off, but no big deal. So you're just going to do that for every piece. I really like doing this because it made my calendar, the paper, feel very thick, you know, adhering two pieces of paper together. Off camera, I glued pattern paper to cardstock and that's what I'm going to glue my book to right now. I just cut it down to the size of the little book that I made and now I'm using some more uh, double-sided tape uh, to adhere the two back pieces of paper to the cardstock. And I just did it off camera because if you have, you could glue this to any piece of paper you want. I just didn't think it was necessary to show. And I also used some stick glue and now I'm just gluing those on and you know making sure that it's all adhered and I know this paper the pattern paper just looks white but it does have pattern on it trust me <laughs> and now I'm just marking the days of the month I left everything blank so that you could just create it how you want you could decorate it how you want um, I didn't want to have to create a template for each month and have different dates and all that. On the left side, where that space is, you could put the date, uh, sorry, not the date, the month on the side uh, vertically, like I just did right there. Here are the little books. I love them. They were a lot less expensive to make than they would have been to buy, and I could make many more with the supplies that I have. So just remember that the link for the template for the calendar will be in the description box below. All you have to do is click on it and print it out, and you're set to go. I'm so excited about my Traveler's Notebook. I will be making one in my next video, so be looking for that. I hope you guys make these. I hope you guys enjoyed watching, and I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye!